We love horror movies from the 70s and 80s And we watch them for two days straight And then we go write a book Now we're looking back at every title One at a time in this podcast that we put out monthly Once we've had an episode for every movie It's time to meet up for another shock marathon Oh yeah, the uh, the red light is red, which means we're recording another exciting episode of the Shock Marathons podcast. This is Matt Farley here with Charlie Roxburg. Greetings. Tom Scalzo. Hello. And Ava Scalzo. Hi. We're going to discuss The Redeemer, also known as Son of Satan, or is that... Or the Redeemer, Son of Satan, also known as High School Reunion Massacre, I believe. Right, Charlie? Yes, and Class Reunion Massacre is another one. Charlie, yeah. tell it, tell us. I mean, you watched this with us, and then several years later, you, you made a horrible mistake. Tell us. Yeah, well, I was browsing the horror section when VHS was still for rent. They had a dollar wall, and I saw a movie called... Uh, High School Reunion Massacre, and I thought, oh, that's a good title, and we, we like the Slumber Party Massacres, yep. and I was the sucker, because I got home, <laughs> I put that tape in, and this was when I, I think I didn't have a car at the time, I might have even ridden my bike to the video <laughs> store, come home, get like a little dinner, pop in the tape, and it's the same freaking dang movie, that lake show, that lake <laughs> shot at the beginning three minutes of a freaking quarry and i'm like this is the redeemer so that's how, you. that's how it starts <laughs> folks you got to give it give him credit though just it's kind of like hats off hats off to the redeemer yeah. you got me um so yeah like charlie says it just starts off with a shot of a lake by a rocky cliff and it's just such a waste of time just set, you know opening credits for just this static shot then it starts moving around a little bit we get a quote on the screen this is good stuff from out of the darkness the hand of the redeemer shall appear to punish those who have lived in sin and then okay so then (laughs) so then a kid just comes out of the water yes charlie okay and tom maybe you might see something here is there an evil shadow that crosses the screen yeah yeah. That's not just co- is that just coincidence though or no? I I don't know. I definitely noticed it though. Like it comes from left to right and the whole screen gets dark. I I, I it can't be a coincidence, right? They had so much footage of this lake. <laughs> <laughs> You're yeah, probably perfect. right, but then there's so many things in this movie and Teresa was watching it with me. She was like, "They couldn't have done that on purpose." And I'm like, "You know what? <laughs> Put another past this movie." <laughs> <laughs> I'm not sure. What does that mean? Does that mean that the heavens said at this moment, boy, arise from water with fist raised high? Yeah, I think they did. Question, okay. question. So is this movie on the Redeemer's side, Tom? I mean, I feel like that's <laughs> yeah, a construction. Yes. <laughs> that's like basically the, the, the what should be our concluding discussion okay okay let's yeah. get to, let's get to it now okay so now someone's sleeping in a bed in an institution or I, or I thought it was an institution someone's sleeping in a bed while there's a blinking shadow on the wall he's got a creepy silver ring on one finger and there's the shadow of the kid i guess what what did yes. i what was that charlie well you could tell by his his bangs like or whatever his right. goofy haircut that it's the kid but yep. why did he need to arise from the lake and then, like, walk places if he can simply teleport? It seems like he teleported there because of the flashing, right? Yeah, but perhaps he takes a bus later, so who, he takes who knows? The, he takes a bus he from takes the quarry the all over the to place. the church. So. Is that, yeah, I think that's just for pleasure. Like, he enjoys a good <laughs> bus ride, but but he has the power to flash into a place and appear. Yeah. And that that was something. I mean, right off the bat, this movie hits you. With boy teleporting into a room, sleeping person that we can't really see who they are. So I guess that sort of builds the mystery. And then comes the grand, you know, one of the grand visual conceits of the movie. This, this, the, I don't even know. We, we, I guess it's not really a spoiler, double but thumb. double thumb. 
double thumb. What, okay, the, wait. When did we see? Did, did we see the double thumb in that opening shot? I missed oh, it. Oh yes. Oh okay. Yeah. It's, so it's like, so the person is sleeping in the most unnatural position possible. <laughs> yeah. So he's got like this one hand that's curved up, so we see the ring, and then <laughs> then there's like we see the shadow, and then the other hand sort of creeps up the pillow, so we see the double thumb, and then it retreats. So mm. it's under the covers again. Does yep. double thumb then, does double thumb have some meaning biblically or mythologically? I believe, I believe it does. I, I don't know. I about, don't know about biblically. It does in this movie, but <laughs> of all the things to cater to a horror audience, they're like, what do we got to get in there? They weren't like, you know, you're always gonna say like beautiful women and killings and maybe some hijinks and comedy. A double thumb. Uh, it's like we, we we're going all in on the double thumb. Ah, uh, awful. Okay, so that's that. Then we're back. The, now the kid's back right near where he came out of the lake. It seems he's wandering through this uh this rocky landscape on a dirt road, and a bus approaches to pick him up. Now he's walking with a suitcase. Oh no. Okay, so now the, is it the redeemer who's walking with a suitcase with his fancy shoes? Is that the redeemer? Yeah. Okay. He's wearing nice white and black shoes. He's headed toward. Yeah. He's headed toward a building. Now that building is yeah. the school. Yeah. Okay. Well, the geography of the school and the church confuses me, but that that building is the school, and he's pretending to be That's some real. sort of insurance worker, right. adjuster. Yeah. It's, it's or... the transferred evil of the redeemer, right? Yes. It's the now evil. Pre. It's the priest who's been transformed into evil and now has unleashed a starting to unleash a plan okay question yes. okay so you guys are telling me that prior to <laughs> prior to the moment where the shadow appears over his bed did he only have one thumb on that hand prior to that yeah yes. Yes. okay all right. How did I miss? I don't know how I, I was. All I noticed was the weird ring on his finger. I didn't realize they were trying to show me a double thumb at that in that scene. That's uh, they dissolve it in there. I think. Shame yeah, on they me. did. It's okay. like uh, Friday the Thirteenth Part Nine, right? The transference of evil. Okay. 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 It's just like that. So he's led into the the building by like the caretaker, and um. In a, in a closed down school, it was like a full time janitor, just like in the dark. Yep. Um, the Redeemer. Um, I mean the the dubbing on this scene is just horrific. Like you don't know who's you don't know who's who, and it just like it just sounds like they're talking really closely into a microphone. You know, like it it there's no room to it. It sound Charlie. Yeah, and and the guy's trying to be like extra American. Like With his southern kind of accent, like yeah. Yeah, like, hey, we're about a pole cat. <laughs> so, like, like, it, it, it gives it this Spanish or Mexican or Italian quality, the, the dubbing and the, the over uh, assertion that this is America. And yeah. oh, it's really nice, though, actually. It's so confusing, and there's so much going on that you're just, your brain has to work overtime just to try to find any semblance of sense. Yeah. <laughs> That's definitely true. Faint praise right there. Uh, he says he's inspecting the location. They go to the indoor pool where he then shoots the caretaker. Um, oh. Okay. Can I just say that that's where I was like, this movie is like failing at being a horror movie. Because, because horror movies, they think that you don't have a gun. Yeah. Like, yeah. that is, I was just like, what is this? Because, like, you just, you don't have a gun. That's, that, I. Right. And there's yeah, the it's dread no fun. of the weapon. Like, it's like, yeah. you know, they do that a couple times. But this part, no, I'm just going to pull out a gun and shoot you while you're bending over to pick up your keys. Yeah. 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 It was so, like, I was just like, what is this? <laughs> I mean, I've been saying what is this from the get-go. But, but that was like, I was like, this is. That's just like this is the worst horror movie ever. It's not even doing a good job with this like like bad guy because the reason you dread like Michael Myers, right? Is because you don't know what how he is going to kill you. Like he is and and it's not and it's not just cuz this movie does 
at, the, at a certain point, let's transition to those like um, those scenes with the reveals of the bodies or the staged bodies. But it takes a while to get there, and I'm like, but that's the whole charm of like these kind of movies. Yeah. Yeah, and there's nothing nothing charming about this this film. Um, no. <laughs> no. Okay, so now. <laughs> Now several kids, including the kid who came out of the, the lake, are going into a building. Okay, what is... Uh, but first the main kid goes to a truck where there's like a Bible salesman. He just kind of like checks on it. Yeah. Um, yeah. All the, okay, and then all the kids are getting dressed in their, um, their choir gowns. And one of them's telling the story of a sailor and a prostitute. Okay. What and is there's going? Another guy. What is going on, Charlie? Excuse me, Farley. There's another guy walking around there too. The guy, the guy who drove the bus. Yeah. He might be like one of Satan's minions or in on the plan as sort of like uh, just a a ta- like a ta- like a guy who has to do tasks or something. Yeah. It you see be. him once or twice, and then he turns his head later in the movie, and you see him in profile. He's I, not. You know him? Is he the Bible no, salesman? I know, I know who you mean, though. Yeah, he's he's definitely there and i feel like that these these scenes like they, they you know i know the shooting of the guy in the pool was not good but like these kind of scenes have sort of potential in that like you know early 70s british horror kind of way you know <laughs> it has potential and then it just it it completely goes away from it but like 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 you said there's a little mystery there so yeah. what what is going on i don't understand the kid comes out of a lake and goes to a church and it, like I thought this for a while, I thought that was supposed to be a flashback to when the Redeemer was younger, but we yeah. did we thought that too. But I'm so we're s- sure that's not the case, right? No. Right. So by the end of the movie, you figure out that it's that's actually not the case. Okay, that is so weird, Charlie. And is he, so the the kids in the choir. Do they not know him? Is he? Is this his first day? Like, is he like? <laughs> he just showed up, right? Yeah. He just showed up. Okay. <laughs> that makes a little sense as to why, like, you know, he he didn't laugh and he's out of control. But also, it makes no sense where a choir that has been an ongoing thing where you would know all the kids that they wouldn't say, "Who are you?" <laughs> yes. Or, you know. <laughs> right. Yeah, it makes no sense. And he just goes right. He just gets on this bus too, right? Like, the guy's like, "All right." Why don't, why don't you get on? Like, again, you know, it just, it doesn't make any sense. Yeah. Cut to the guy, the Redeemer. Um, he's now rubbing like, Vaseline over the corpse's head. Uh, and we see a school yearbook in the suitcase. So now the Redeemer is making a mask of the caretaker. Am I right? Is that what's going on there? Yeah. Oh. And it's yeah. so good. It's such a good mask that by the time the people come to the door, they're just like, ah, yeah, there's there's the caretaker. Yeah. As if they'd recognize him, right, Tom? <laughs> exactly. Right. That's what, what, there's what, no sense in any of that. What does that mean? Like, <laughs> the only thing is that he, right, that he, they might recognize him if they knew each other in their youth. And I think that's supposed to be the story, <laughs> but they don't establish that, as far as I can tell, with any believability. So... Yeah, yeah. Did the Redeemer go to that high school, Charlie? Uh, I I don't know. <laughs> I, I assume so. But the other thing with the with that mask is, if they don't know what the caretaker looks like, he could have. He didn't have to do such an intricate professional mask. It could have been anything, any of these number of other disguises. Yeah. Um, but yeah, that's a great question, Farley. And uh, I think you have to assume yes, because why would someone enact this specific plan unless son of satan oh, i don't know why satan wants people not to sin <laughs> but, but um <laughs> this is the other very confusing part of the movie. okay yeah just or move on from the there but i am not sure <laughs> okay so like it's almost as if they just had this short movie about the son of satan coming out of the lake and they just tacked it on to the beginning of this high school reunion thing so, to avoid having to film the shots of of the the reason he was redeeming them, sort of, Charlie? And to make money off the omen, ripping off the omen. Ah, uh, okay. To have more of the boy. They were kind of like, <laughs> we need to, we need an evil boy. Oh, bad choice. Reason. 
bad that's probably choice. It. Yeah, I, you're probably right. The but way, the way they cut it together, though, it definitely makes you feel like, you know, the present day is the Redeemer guy killing the guy in in the room and making the mask, and then like the boy in the choir is like the past, right? You, yeah. You think that that past telling you why this is all happening, and then it's just when that turns out to be not true then you you totally lose track of even what the motivation is for anybody. And what's the son of Satan, like, being taunted for? He's the son of Satan, for God's sake, you know? He should be a little tougher with that bully, right? And he's very comfortable going into church and singing uh, religious songs and stuff. He's a good guy. Crazy. Crazy. They are so misguided on every level. (laughs) And... The people that they're out to get, they're not so bad, really. Like, I mean, like, what? I mean, well, the problem is, like, unlike, <laughs> unlike most movies where you have, like, a group of people and there's, like, a clear bully. And, like, here there's, like, one guy who is a total jerk, right? The, the Teddy, I think his name is. The, the guy who gets his hand slammed into the... Yeah. Yeah. Which for a long time, Tom and I thought he was the he was Terry. the older version of the kid who pulled the knife. <laughs> yeah. So like yeah. for a big chunk of the movie, we thought that that's who he was. And we're like, oh well, he's clearly a jerk. But then we were like, but who are these other girls? Like, where do they come into play? And then you kind of figure out like, oh wait, no, they're getting killed because like one of them is a lesbian. The actor guy is gay. Um, and then I think it's the um, the the guy with the glasses, John, was uh, was greedy, or, or no? He... Yeah, it's greedy. Avarice. And and then and then there's the rich lady who's just sort of bitchy, but I guess she's also. Oh, she greedy. killed animals. She oh, was bad to the creepy beasts the of pigeons. the field. Yeah. Uh, oh wow. It's pretty, it's pretty... like all these like moral. It's like trying to make these moral judgments was a don't even work in today's society right because like <clears throat> it, it, it we've moved past the age where i mean i hope that most of us have moved past the age where we're like oh gay means morally corrupt that, that's really not okay yeah, yeah. And even i wonder even then it seems a little uh a well, little uptight well, for one thing time. for that guy the reason that he's being targeted is he he's not humble actually the so actor yeah yeah, yeah. The oh, actor yeah, is yeah. a bit humility. of a jerk. He lacks humility. Yeah. yeah. Uh, all right. So back to the kids. Like we said, I told a joke you didn't laugh, says the bully to um, the the late kid. He, bully holds a knife to his neck, but then I guess they're summoned to go sing in the choir. So he's like, ah, I guess I won't kill you. Um, <laughs> uh, the, yeah. the yearbook, by the way, is from Stuart Morse Academy, ninth, class of 67. Uh, now we're listening to an intense sermon at the church. It seems to be making an impact on the kid. And what I wrote here, the kid who is presumably the grown-up who just uh, killed the guy in the pool, but that is not the case. Now, who, is that the Redeemer making the speech in, at this point, or is that a different priest? I think it's the Redeemer. Okay, so I think it is, yeah. there's, they just, they're cutting, cross-cutting between... Like what is going? This uh, it just doesn't make sense, right, Charlie? There's no uh, explaining this. It, it doesn't make sense, and also <laughs> the redeemer didn't see the boy like when he gave him the double thumb, but it seems like they have a uh, an understanding, a bond yeah, mentally somehow. Oh you my! Know what the God. other one's doing? All of that stuff. No the kid in the lake and all the church stuff completely unnecessary. Just filling up time. All right, now we're in an office where a secretary is yelling at a guy who wants to see her boss. Uh, her boss is a, is busy playing chess over the phone in his office. Uh, she finally gets rid of him, and now uh, we're going to listen. So not bad. Of all the things to have someone be doing who's supposed to be a jerk. I know. This is yeah, what right? all, pretty much all of them. It's like none of them need to be killed for these like minor offenses. This is, this is like one of all of them. The chess over the phone is. Yeah. yeah. L- let's How dare he. Let's listen. Let's listen to this. Did you finally get rid of him? Mm-hmm. Good. All right. What's on the calendar for today? Well. Homer Beasley called again. He really wants you to write his will. He's quite sick, you know. 
I don't care how sick he is. I've already told him twice before I'm not interested. There isn't enough money in Beasley's estate to make it worth my while. Is there anything else? Yes, Elizabeth called. I forgot all about her. Hiya, baby. Listen, our date this weekend is off. Yeah, I've decided I'm definitely going to my school reunion. Ciao, baby. <laughs> All right. So how Hi. dare he? Like, I'm sorry. If if it doesn't make financial sense to do Homer Beasley's um, um, last will, I mean, that so be it. You know, Homer Beasley can find a different lawyer, right, Tom? Hey, yes, he can. He's got options. Okay, so this this is the first of just seemingly endless introduction of characters. Just we get one to the next to the next. And Charlie, how do you feel about that? And I'm just gonna say it's also the first of the people who doesn't have a particularly like empty calendar or good reason for really wanting to necessarily go to this reunion. <laughs> yeah. They're not tempted in a believing way. If it was like, if it were like, if you show up, you could win a prize or it's going to be, there's something about it that's particularly awesome. It's all like, yeah. Would this person really want to go that much? It's mm -hmm. a, yeah. It, it's Inconvenient just convenient for them. It's or, just everyone's you know. do. They just it's their duty as uh, graduates of the class of '67. They just have to do it, you know. But yeah, it's a very yeah, good point. None of them seem, like, none of them really want. seem interested or excited about it. Um, mm. Meanwhile, well, none, of them, like, none of them talk about each other, right? So yeah. like, it's not like in these individual scenes you have these actors establishing any sort of rapport with another. So like. You know, like there was that John and the rich woman whose name I forget. Um, Jane. Jane. Like they end up kissing later, right? Well, you would think that in the scene with John where they were establishing like he could, he could have been like, oh, you know, I, I, I heard that Jane is coming. You know, there's nothing like that. So there's like you just have these like disparate characters who also kind of all look the same. So this is my <laughs> other big problem was like I couldn't tell the difference between half of them. And I was just like, and I you didn't get a sense of their names or anything. So I was just like, I don't even know who, who is who for the, like, and this is like yeah. the bit, the first like 45 minutes of this movie. <laughs> yeah. so I was like confused. I was like, I don't know what's happening. Yeah. <clears throat> oh, yeah. yeah um... The most basic like need of the movie is just to sort of know who is who, who's who. <laughs> Right. And you can't, yeah. Right. So now we're going to meet the waitress at the bar. And is that Cindy? I thought yeah. Cindy was... Oh, Cindy's the waitress? I think so, yep. Okay. Yeah. I thought she was the one who ended up with... Because there's that weird conversation with the couple at the bar. Right. Yeah, but she's the waitress, right? The couple is... Oh, well, she's I don't know what her job is. They don't. I don't know if they really. Oh wait. Say. Oh, is the couple? Office. Oh, the couple is the main character. It's Cindy who's the the. Okay, I'm sorry. For some reason, I thought the waitress was the was the character who who then. No, it seems like it should be. Because it kind of focuses on her at first, but then there's a couple talking where, um, uh, the guy says there's a big difference between usefulness, uselessness, and studliness, right? Yeah. 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 And then and the end of the scene is focused on them. So I assume that I don't know. I don't even know. Don't know we it. still don't know which one. <laughs> anyway, Cindy. Cindy is one of the women at the bar. We're pretty sure. Um, yeah. It yeah. makes more sense That's that it would it would be the couple because otherwise, why are we why are we getting details of this random couple's um, conversation? But. This is the Redeemer, after all, in which case all all bets are off in terms of, of any kind of logical move. But Miss um, Lauren LaRue does a little dance for everybody. It's it's um, it's very well received by the, the whole bar, including that guy and, and um, the girl who's with them, who may or may not be Cindy, um, is not pleased. So that happens. Now we're at the drive-in restaurant. 
And and which guy is that, Charlie? Terry. 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 All Football right. Football player. So, okay, Terry's so, getting yeah. the. So this guy we assumed was the kid with the knife for like a large chunk yeah. of the movie. Right, and no. there's <laughs> not. There's plenty of reasons to assume that. You know, I'm with you, hundred percent. Um, <laughs> so Terry's enjoying a burger. He's he's got a um. A romantic uh, thing going on with a waitress. She comes in to join him and keep him company in the car. Then her son Richie arrives, and the guy tries to give him a dollar and tell him to scram. But Richie very gently closes the door in his finger. <laughs> so oh, believable, huh? Details. Yeah. Wow. So what a jerk he, he is. Says, like, as if the plot weren't confusing enough, they're like, let's add in some confusing action here, too. I, I really... It's so confusing that I didn't, I wasn't sure for a second what had happened, why he was screaming and looking at his finger. Because no one goes to reach, here, let me hand you a dollar and put my finger in the, like, in between the joint of where, like, the car closes. He he, wasn't even there. It made no sense. It offended me as as a person. (laughs) Well, and, and we've already introduced something weird with fingers, right? So you, like, you went another one? Yeah. Yeah. Like what? Why? If it's not connected, you should not do that. <laughs> That's Amen. Such a good point. Yeah. All right. On we go to Jane. She is uh, doing some shooting at her uh, her lavish estate. Philip arrives on a golf course, and they have a fight about the upcoming uh, high school reunion, and whether or not she's taking him. And then Ernest, um, the butler, lets a pigeon free, and she shoots it. So. No question, she deserves to die. Um, <laughs> on we move to the movie set where Roger, the actor, is uh, behaving like a, a spoiled actor. He talks with Sam, the director, and um, and he says, I'm really going to enjoy myself at my high school reunion after putting up with all this nonsense. And then he just leaves the set. Right, Tom? Yeah, he's, he storms off. What a jerk. They're ready to, to do another take. And finally... And nope. Finally, we meet Kirsten, who has a girlfriend named Petra, and Petra is um, upset that she's not invited to the high school reunion. She's like, are you ashamed of me? And uh, and Kirsten's just like, no, no, don't worry about it. And um, I guess Kirsten, uh, Petra's going to watch the cat, right, Ava? Yep. Key. Not a key point, actually. <laughs> no. It does not come up again. Folks, oh, folks, we are 26 minutes into the movie at this point, and we finally met all the characters. And I don't know about you, but I think that's too much time. <laughs> like, yeah. just it was so much intro. Yes, a intro. yes, so much. And, yeah. and it, uh, the problem too is like it's not even compelling, right? Right. Like none of these scenarios. There's nothing. It doesn't add anything. Like. Even now, like knowing where the movie ends and like the the messaging behind the movie, like it's still not enough because it's like this isn't providing any motivation. The you know, there's no reason for us to root. There's no reason for us to root for these characters, but there's also not a reason for us to root for the redeemer. No, yeah, I hate Usually everybody in these movies where you know we don't really have a prologue here, but there's a prologue. The kid gets tormented. It's right. like it's a prom night. It's a graduation day where, you know, something bad happens at the beginning. 10, 15 years later, revenge. Yeah. Here, everybody's kind of just a little bit of a jerk. Yeah. yeah. And it's but not even what they're left with. It's not even what they so did fun. either. It's not what they used to do. It's it's what they are now, sort of. Right, Tom? Exactly. Yeah, yeah there's not. That, and that's why it's so confusing because it starts with the kid being kind of tormented, right? So that's why any you know logical person is going to make that connection. But that is just totally thrown away. And I think there's some sort of assumption that the Redeemer guy was somehow not treated nicely by these specific people, but we don't really get any evidence of that. No. Right? So then it's not like something like, you uh, even a prologue where you're like uh, they're all getting like a letter in the mail saying oh you have to come to the thing you know and it's whatever and then you see him at home like writing it and cackling like you'd at least have some sort of logical thread charlotte and maybe is there any kind of 
hint that they're being punished just for the way they are just because by the forces of 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 satan or something yes i think it's that specific person who who's doing it doesn't matter it's just that some punishment had to happen and this is the person it decided to infect and have that person yes yes that's what it is i mean that's 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 it but it still doesn't like that's just not enough right Oh yeah! Oh no, definitely not. I still don't know why the kid was in underwater. I thought it almost would make you think that there was like an accident that's not part of the movie that happened years ago, and then he like got reanimated or something. I don't know why he had to come out of the water. Uh, that's an entrance to hell, the underworld. I think it's one of like, like the gate, I mean, like the beyond. To assume at the end. Well, like, let's let's say that we agree on this. Let's say the devil has said, "Okay, I'm going to send you as my minion." You're going to go infect this priest guy. I've set up this reunion for six people that are moderately annoying. Yeah. You're going to get a mask on to make sure that they don't recognize you, and then you can kill them. <laughs> it's- oh, that's nice, Tom. Well done. <laughs> All right. Um, speaking of the mask, Redeemer's still working on that mask. We check in with him. Um now, oh, this is fun. So it's Richie's mom. Remember, Rich, Richie is the kid who pushed um, the, the door gently in, into the guy's finger. Um, she is worried sick about Richie. Richie hasn't come back since, since he ran <laughs> off. And let's listen to, I mean, let's listen to this, um, this back and forth because this is real good. He's got to be somewhere, honey. Yeah, we just haven't looked in the right places, that's all. Well, maybe he's at a friend's house. He ran away because he thought he hurt you with that door. Oh, he, uh, he thought he hurt me, huh? Hey, listen, you pick me up, okay? You get your own ride. I'm not doing anything until I find Richie. He's hurt. Bye, sweet. Save some of your energy for me, huh? All right. <laughs> Why did she even drop him off? Wow. Is is the real question. I mean, yes. that's Here's a crisis situation. Boy ran away. I'll give you a ride. Yeah. I'll give you a ride, like to, yeah, yeah. I don't know, to another town or something. It it felt like it was some out of state thing, to be honest. So I was like, you know, like it seemed like they were traveling pretty far for this reunion. Like, why would you, like, my kid runs off, and there's You'll no way I'm for him later. leaving. <laughs> town to take <laughs> someone to like no that is just not happening yes that is exactly the problem with that scene right there because the way she's acting she's like frantic and worried about richie and yet um she she's in the midst of this unnecessary drop off and he's a total jerk um back there I, I like though when uh she's like he thought he hurt you and then he lifts up his his injured hand thought he hurt me that that was uh yeah that was a fun little moment. That's a good touch. Okay, so when while that's happening, Johnny and Kirsten are already there, and then who's the guy with the broken finger? Terry. Ter- so Terry meets yep. up with them and let's listen to their their banter talking about the good old days. Joys of marriage. Hello, football. You remember Terry? Johnny, Kirsten, don't tell me you two got married. Oh, don't worry. I won't tell you. (laughs) The kiss of death, dear. Yeah, you know it. Now, knowing Mr. Touchdown, I'll bet your wife is a super cook. Oh, oh, no. She's not my wife. Uh, Me and my wife are meat and potatoes, but on the road, it's strictly hamburger. (laughs) (laughs) Uh, looks like our star has been scoring again, and his wife caught him at it. Say, are you still singing? Yeah, you're a regular nightingale in the Glee Club. We're gonna tee, tee, tee for SMA. Remember that? We're gonna you remember fight Blue Flag 26? Let's game. try it. Come on. We're gonna root, root, root on, our home put. team on and win a game. Oh, nice. You fellas are so great. Never change. Oh, uh, yeah. Yes. Painful. <laughs> oh. Yeah. Uh, we we talked about this when we watched it the first time. The meat and potatoes. I mean, that was a, maybe my favorite line. Yeah. Um. So, why doesn't he say, "My wife and I are meat and potatoes, but on the road, it's caviar or something like that"? Why yeah. is it instead two things that are virtually equal? 
<laughs> I don't know. I don't know. On I the don't road even to... know what he means. Like, does he is he <laughs> saying I'm a traveling salesman and I cheat on my wife? Like, was that so. the idea? But yeah. But, but, but first of all, the cheapest thing he could find is that. What he means? But but also it's like <laughs> he. he did, there's nothing that establishes that he has a wife. Like all we've seen is the scene with him and the girlfriend. So yeah. like, and the girlfriend has a kid. Like, like that's just like really complicated for a guy who's like cheating on. You know what I'm saying? Like yeah. that's like why would you cheat on a girl? Like you have a wife at home and you're gonna cheat on your wife with a single mom with the kid, who the kid hates. You know, like that's just like a lot of work for. I think you know if you're already leading a double life, you should keep it simple. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> My recommendation to cheaters out there. <laughs> and um. Don't call the kid. And note, he got a hamburger from this woman, right? At the uh, drive-in. Yes, he yeah. did. Just saying. Just, I mean, we watch the movies often for this kind of moment where you almost want to just hit pause and talk to your buddies and say, what does that mean? <laughs> how could they How could they come up with such a, like, there's just analogies that make no sense. There's stuff that seems like it was translated from another language. Um, it really is that confusing, and uh, I like it. Just hangs in the air like a bad joke, and um, we enjoy that. It's kind of like uh, this is final exam week. Pop quizzes just won't do. Although that that phrase, I guess, makes sense because he was saying, "Let's have a, a tryst now." I, I'm quoting from final exam. This one makes less sense. Anyway, now we see the actor. Um, who's that's Roger? Okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And. Now Roger's there with Cindy, is that right? Or does he does he have a yep. date? Yeah. That, no, he's there with Cindy. Just they showed up at the same time. We they right. to show yeah. up at the same time. Okay, okay. Um, there. Then they're let in <laughs> by the caretaker. I like how half of the podcast has been like, okay, so just confirming that we all agree that this is what happened because I, it takes. <laughs> many scenes that just didn't make any sense yeah i know we're we're yeah. high, uh, four highly intelligent educated people and it takes a, it takes a lot of work to to figure make any sense of this movie um so they're the the, the caretaker lets them in and so like keep in mind the as far as we know the son of satan somehow inspired this guy to go to this place and, and, and do this plan, which involves killing the caretaker and put it in making a mask of his face so that they, he can let them in and they will be none the wiser, none the wiser <laughs> about his evil plan for a few minutes, Charlie. And he almost <laughs> tries to get them to leave. <laughs> he says like, I don't know nothing about no reunion. <laughs> What do you mean? <laughs> well, I like, get yeah, you know it, I, that's not even playing hard to get in a way that would make them want to stay. It might, in fact, make them say, "I'm going to go back to my car and you know go home or call somebody." Imagine this scenario: he just opens the door as himself, and either if he went to the high school, they they recognize him, and say, "Hey, how are you?" You know, or. Yep. Yeah. Or maybe he didn't even go to the high school, in which case he just says, hi, welcome to the... Or just leave the door open. There's so many options other than the one that involves creating a mask, a believable mask, mind you. <laughs> like His yeah. mask-making skills are I impressive. Wow. With the jaw that can move and everything. <laughs> yeah. no, nothing suspicious about that guy. <laughs> okay, so they... Wait, are you wearing a mask? Yeah. They do it from. Do you think they just had the caretaker actor do that from the, in in that shot? I think he did, right? Because it didn't look like he was wearing a mask. Well, they shot it from so it's far. It's kind away. of a long shot, I but think, I mean, the lighting is terrible too. Hard to tell. Who knows? We we might never. We we'll probably never know. They go to the cafeteria, which is all decorated and filled with great food. Okay. Okay, so oh my god! So the, so re much, what? <laughs> the redeemer, in addition to making a mask out of an actual dead man's face, is also putting up streamers, right? He's cooking these this great food. He's got the big sign for the for this um for this fake reunion. Ava, am I right? 
nope, that's exactly what appeared to happen. <laughs> and also, like, <laughs> the, they go in, and it's this banquet hall is empty. It's decorated, and the food is just out. And they're like, and this whole scene, I don't know if you have a clip of this scene, Charlie, I mean, Farley, but, but they are, they're, they keep saying the same thing. I'm so hungry, let's eat. I'm so hungry, let's eat. And literally, like, five of the characters literally repeat the same line, like, verbatim. <laughs> yeah. And they don't extend it. I'm like, they must not have had any actual dialogue prepped for the scene. Yeah, yeah I love moments that like that. Yeah, they just say ad lib. What do you got, Charlie? Just, just imagine the the timing to make this feast already, because they they're not saying, oh, this this lamb is cold or this mm -hmm. ice cream is melted. Everything's perfect. Yeah, he cooked a banquet and did laid out like forty place settings. <laughs> In the meantime, maybe while the mask was drying, <laughs> just for this one moment to create a nice banquet for them. It doesn't even like. There's no turnabout that they're learning something about banquets or he had to lure them in anymore. It just, there could have been no food there. And then they could have just said, oh, well, let's go do something else. Yeah. I think the only thing I was thinking was we were talking about it. It's like, oh, if they eat a lot, I got them for gluttony. I oh, got yeah. it. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Well, Teddy's the glutton. That, that's what they say at the beginning. And that's why at the end of the movie, when they show the, the credits, his freeze frame pause on his actor's name is him like eating that <laughs> eating that hamburger which yeah. is shades of uh sheriff ron willboy in uh, blood cult can we Arby's. um i've got him as being terry is it terry or teddy oh, ter it's terry terry yeah it's okay terry but i mean whatever who cares none of the characters matter yeah so he's the glutton he says he talks about food a lot and that's why when he arrives to the um he says, I imagine Mr. Football's wife is a super cook, something like that. Oh, you know, yeah. Kristen says. Just because he's yeah, a hungry, that's... the guy likes to eat and he deserves to be killed? I don't know. Anyway. Yes. Yep. <laughs> it's not because he's mean. It's because he likes to eat too much. <laughs> yeah. All right. So Terry goes with oh. one of the women to call someone about the reunion. Who, who's, he going, who's he going with there? They, they're going to kiss by the phone. This is John. Yeah, that's not Terry. Okay, okay. So John... This is an unbelievable part here. I, I, I was trying to figure it out, and I watched this movie twice. Um, <laughs> Before this? In the last two days. Oh, wow. And I think they're trying to establish that he's trying to call, like, the old headmaster. Right. Mm. And then they're talking about that, that old headmaster or somebody like that still lived with their mother. So he calls the operator and asks for that oh. woman's name. I thought same, it was I thought it was one of their old classmates, but um, who who might have like been class president? Might, in, right. But why would they be calling him just just to say well, why isn't he there or what's going on? Just because they assume they're like, well, it's a reunion. I bet you so and so uh, is running it based on no 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 actual knowledge. That that's how I interpreted it. But who's the woman who's who goes with him that he kisses? Which one is that? That's Jane, Jane. Jane. The, the rich. Yeah, the oh, pigeon okay. shooter. The pigeon shooter. <laughs> okay, <laughs> so they kiss. He tries to make a call. He gets through the to the operator, but then it gets disconnected. Um, apparently, the Redeemer was waiting till then to disconnect, Charlie? Dude, every horror movie, they show the bad guy with scissors, right? Yeah. Yep. Click. You cut it, and then you're like, oh, the tension is rising. You know, they're getting trapped. No, you, they let him get through for a bit, and then it's just like maybe the operator just got cut off or something. Yeah, it's handled so stupidly. <laughs> so now another one of the women, I, I'll guess it's Cindy. I don't know, but uh, decides to go figure out what's going on, but she can't get out of the building. It's been locked with bars. She goes into a room for help and finds the dead body of the caretaker. And then everyone joins her there to see it. If it's got maggots, um, if the maggots got to him fast, then who let us in earlier? One of them asks. But clearly they figure out, I mean, if there's already maggots on this guy, then <laughs> someone else let us in. Dun, dun, dun. But they don't 
they don't talk about it enough or say that enough for it to really hit home for me. It's just kind of yeah, yeah, lost over. And then like they they're having knowledge about the time it takes for the magus is kind of like not believable and uh, like yeah. they could have they could have so easily right made it clear that the caretaker guy and the redeemer look the same. Then they find the dead caretaker and then they suspect one of them did it right and then uh, yeah. you have like this scenario where there's tension and they're suspecting each other you know and there's so many different ways you could go other than yeah. this one that's a good point yeah um also i'm just having trouble i know they show bars on the windows but uh i'm just having trouble buying the idea that there's no other way out of that that big building you know, I yeah. I guess if the Redeemer is able to put together that feast, uh, he can do anything. But um, and and we're gonna learn very soon that he left two doors open, and we'll we'll get to it. Okay. Yeah. And also, so we'll say many horror movie has this, but it's the first time where they find characters find a dead body and don't really sweat it that hard. <laughs> they don't really care. <laughs> Yeah. They're like, oh, well, maggot guy. I don't even know if they did anything with him. I think they left him in the chair and we're like, want to go walk around, you know? Yeah. <laughs> Maybe they do deserve to die, though. <laughs> one of them calls to help from one of them calls to help from a passerby who it turns out is the Redeemer dressed like the OK, by the Grim Reaper, I guess. So he's that's out there. The, oh, no, that's um, that's uh, Kristen. Yeah. Kir- Kirsten. Yeah, one Kirsten. of those. Um, so, okay, yeah, so she's, like, banging on the door because she's locked in, and she's like, help us, help us, but it's the Redeemer kind of, like, dressed as uh, the Grim Reaper, and uh, he starts banging on the door with his stick, and then um, then they just cut, like, we don't know how, how that, it just, they're back in the cafeteria kind of casually yeah. sitting around again. Like, <laughs> Does she mention that to the other people, really? I mean... I think they were all kind of there when it happened. They actually discuss it. It's weird. I don't know. <laughs> okay. So, it's not clear. It so then, matter. it doesn't matter. At one point, they're down there and they're like, what about all this music that we're hearing? That's got to be coming from somewhere. So they're like, well, let's go check out the audio vis- visual room. You know? Well, and uh, yeah. um, they see someone in the chair and they approach quite stealthily. I would. I'm going to add. They're crawling around. Really cool. Um, make one move, and I'm going to bust your head. One of them says while holding a crowbar. They turn the chair around, and we see the the person's holding a flamethrower. Uh, mm-hmm. And he incinerates one of them. And he's wearing um a paper mache mask. It's John, yeah, it's John and Terry, and J- Terry is the one who ends up incinerated. Okay, now we know we're we're quite quite aware of the fact that the Redeemer's mask making abilities are are un unmatched. What is he doing? Yeah. What is going on with this thing? He's he's going for the dramatic flair with the, with the paper mache, Tom. I I have no idea. I at one point I thought it was like a a robot, like a remote control doll or something. You know? <laughs> yeah. Like, cause it doesn't even seem like it's a person, and we'll talk about it later when they get onto the stage. Like, I thought it was connected to. Yeah, it. I was gonna say that. Well, I, is it supposed to look like a person? Okay, or... well now I don't yeah. know. Is that the Redeemer with a mask, or is that one of the things that the Redeemer created? I, I don't. Know. I didn't think it was a is a person at, at when I watched it, but. Well, no, it that's a good be. point because we know that he's able to build marionettes that can murder people. We're gonna see that later, right? Yes. Yeah. That's kind of what I was I was wondering so, I, after the fact. I thought about it. Is uh, it more cause it, during the scene? It doesn't seem like it's him. But wow. Maybe, I don't know. He built this thing that is just sitting there, waiting for the moment that it's turned around so that it can shoot a flamethrower at whoever turned him around. Oh yeah! All right, and, and it's it's amazing how John takes it. As far as I remember, flaming body moving around in slow motion, right? Probably would have burnt the whole building down by whatever it crashes into. Mm-hmm. I think they cut away from that, and then the other guy just he isn't even panicked that much or anything. No, he does not. Remember. He barely reacts, 
And like, you know, when he comes down to like tell, or they, I don't think we see him come down and tell them they're just like seated all on the stairs and he's talking about it, but it's not like, did he, he, did he even try and douse the flames? Like he doesn't <laughs> even do anything. He just kind of like watches Terry go up in flames. Yep. It, yeah, it's everyone is so casual about what's happening. I I almost kind of like it. It's more fun just to watch them. They re, like one of them dies. It's just a pattern. Someone dies, then they just reconvene at a spot and just kind of casually talk <laughs> about what happened. And I'm like, guys, the redeemer is somewhere really nearby because he just killed someone right over there. What are you doing? <laughs> yeah. Let's all talk about it now. Uh, and speaking of that, the the scene that Ava just mentioned, I, I have it queued up here. Let's listen to them talking about what's going on on the stairwell. Revenge? What for? What else could it do? Okay, I just love that. Th- that's how the scene starts. Revenge? What for? Like, oh, that is great. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> I think we need to hear that again. I'm sorry, folks, but let's hear that one more time. Revenge? What for? What else could it be? <laughs> well, what did I do? Well, what did any of us do, Roger? Anything. Uh, something we did to somebody back in school. Yeah, Terry was always picking on people, remember? Don't talk about him now. Did something? But to who? I don't remember doing anything to anybody. I'm not as positive as you. Well, I don't care about any of you. But nobody began to hate me until I married a lot of money. <laughs> but don't you all see? It's all too perfect. Look, there aren't any homes nearby. There's nobody around to see us or hear us. Look, does this building have an incinerator? Oh, come on, let's just burn the whole building down. Then I'll bring somebody. <laughs> Fire isn't a bad idea. Uh, we have to gather something to burn, right? I'll go rip up some tablecloths in the cafeteria. Let's check out the classroom. All right. That's some good oh. stuff. There's a lot to unpack there. This is quite a plan. <laughs> well, there's two, two things. Two things. Go, ahead, go ahead, Charlie. You go first. No, you go first. Uh, I was just like, this, the first thing, right, is that <coughs> they're, they're kind of hitting on this idea, like, that there's maybe some reason behind it. But, like, even in the course of trying to figure that out, they basically dismiss that as an option, and then they kind of undercut their own logic when talking about it, right? It's like, well, I didn't, I didn't even know any of you basically until I got rich, you know? It, yeah. It, it, like, it does. That doesn't make any sense. And then immediately their thoughts go to, let's burn down the building. Like, why, yeah. is, why is that? But when when they said that. I thought, okay, they're going to start a signal fire out on the grass because they still had access to the outside. You don't start a fire in the place where there's supposed to be a fire on an ordinary... I know the building's closed, but if there's an incinerator on the campus, it probably very tidily goes up a smokestack and doesn't look like too much is wrong versus like a big, crazy bonfire out in the grass. Right. And then your thing you're going to burn into an incinerator is you have to go tear up some tablecloths, too. You know how small that fire would be? Like, <laughs> let me take this piece of cloth strip and put it in. Th- it would be like poof and out, you know? And, and it, they uh, just had access to a flamethrower. Or they were just – one of them was just in the same room as a flamethrower. And yeah. we don't know how it ended, but Tom thinks it, it's a some sort of robot – that was handling it, which just take the flamethrower and boom, start the fire that way. Anyway, um, oh. in my and notes, they go back to that room later, right? And they they, they do go back to the room. Yes, later. they don't even think about it. In my notes, well, this I, plan this plan comes to nothing anyway. It's like it's yeah, like oh, the incinerator. We're plan. gonna do the incinerator, and then they don't do anything to follow through. It's like yeah. well, remember why? Because the redeemer knew. They were going to try to burn these tablecloths <laughs> in the <laughs> facility that's meant for burning things. So he took bricks and mortar yes. and yeah. built a mini wall on the inside just to have a gotcha moment that he doesn't even witness to enjoy the <laughs> gotcha. <laughs> we'll get there. All right. In my Sounds notes, like- in my notes, I wrote, I'm not convinced that they've checked every possible way to escape. 
And sure enough, yeah. one of them, I guess it's the, the, the pigeon shooter, Jane, she finds a door leading right out of the cafeteria. She heads out. And, okay, so but the Redeemer, Redeemer is like 10 steps ahead of everybody. He knew that this was going to happen. Um, so, and that it would be her. Th- yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> because he's got this <laughs> this new persona of, like, the hunter, the you know, the hunter guy with his little duck named Mildred, uh, the decoy duck. And um and she goes to him for help and he's like oh okay yeah here and um it turns out you know we figure out quickly it's him and he shoots her out there that is just that's just ridiculous but, Tom like like Ava said like he 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 knew that would be like an appropriate death for her right because she kills things but right. how does he know that like how how does he possibly was she always hunting animals in high school. Yeah, but that's what's not. so confusing is like the motivation to kill these people is like their presence. Um, unless the Redeemer is like their priest that confesses them and he decides like that. That's the only reason they would know he would know any of this stuff Ooh, about yeah, them, that, right? Be. Because it's like, <laughs> but, there's, but they don't make the problem with this movie is that it doesn't actually make connections between the characters. Yeah. So like. There's no, there's no one to root for here because we don't know these people or know what. Like, okay, fine, yeah, they went to school together. They seem to sort of know each other, but like, it's so flimsy, and there's no actual on-screen evidence that there are any relationships here. Like, because even, like, with the, with the one we just, with the one we, we watched with the, the prey, where they're like all out camping, and there's these three sets of couples. Well, there's some, you know, like. It's not like I was like, oh, I love all these people who are here on the screen, but they at least had some emotional connection to each other. Yeah. And so you can root for a group of people that way. You love Gail, you know it. But <laughs> <laughs> but there's but this with this with the this group of people, like there's nothing that connects them to each other and thus there's nothing that connects them to the audience because you know, it's just kind of like, uh, oh, okay. Well, this is happening now, I guess. Yeah. yeah. So, um, I, I guess he brings the body back into the school because the next shot is all of them looking at the body. Lots of yeah. just like, rather than explain how we got from A to B, just cut and and boom, we're at B. There's you know so many questions. Uh, after morning. I, I mean, sorry. No go. You gotta raise your hand. I sang. Sorry. So I. Just... Just on to inter- like when we were talking about the body placement thing that is so crucial in these movies. And this is when the movie starts to try to do that. Mm. But it, it loses all, all of the scare, the, the surpri- those surprise elements, right? Because what's awesome about like the Friday the 13th movies or Halloween is that like character opens the door and something gets <laughs> caught up them and the body. And so that's when you the audience like jumps and screams like that's what those movies are meant to do you're supposed to get those moments where you like like you're so surprised you jump and scream yeah this movie does not deliver on any of that yeah. even these moments where like oh body placement thing it's like cut okay and yeah. Yeah. They've already found it by the time the scene starts. Yeah. Exactly. That's a good point. After yeah. mourning a moment, they resume the plan to light the building on fire <laughs> to get someone to notice it. <laughs> the actor finds the charred corpse of um the guy who was burned. Which was that Terry who got burned? Terry. Terry. Yeah. Um, he reports this news to the other survivors. Terry's dead. We're alive. Concentrate on getting out of here, the, the other guy says. And, I mean, that really... They already knew he was dead. Yeah. That's a maybe, good point. Maybe. Oh, yeah. Yeah, they did already know, obviously, because the guy was right next to Terry when he burned. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Unless he didn't tell him. But but then, no, because that's the scene afterwards is in the stairwell, right. and they're having a whole conversation about it. This is why that makes no sense. <laughs> yeah. They just didn't know. They just didn't. It, what a mess. Yeah. <laughs> I can't believe this movie got, you know, it got finished, and it, 
people are still watching it like 40 plus years later. So, I mean, joke's on us, really. It was released by Victory Multimedia, a little company called Victory Multimedia <laughs> on VHS in 1995, which uh, is of personal interest to us. Two of our movies were also released by Victory Multimedia, so that's pretty good. <laughs> wow, not, not, I'm so proud to be in that, uh, that um, whatever that is. Catalog? Thank you. We could have put it on the video box <laughs> from the men who also released a cheap VHS of <laughs> The Redeemer. The Redeemer has thought of everything because the incinerator, as Charlie said, is no longer operational. How how will they ever burn the place down now? They open the incinerator and just find a brick wall. Ah, oh, this guy, this guy thinks of everything. But they they must have been wanting to build the fire just to make smoke because the incinerator is designed for fires, so it wouldn't burn the building down. <laughs> well, I right? think no. Well, they wanted they'd light they would light the um the sheet and then take the sheet out and let it burn outside of the incinerator was the plan. But you'd think you could just go to the kitchen and let, yeah, put it on the stove or so find a candle or, or like find a match. Someone you'd think one of them might be a smoker, yeah. you know. Um, I mean, in the yeah. seven, she is exactly shown. Yeah. So right, you're right. Cindy's <laughs> smoking when they're eating. Great news, folks, though. What they do is they go back. They all reconvene at the steps again, and they have another discussion. Let's listen to it. We must be overlooking some way of getting out of here. There's always a solution to every problem, right? Look, from now on, we'll just go everywhere together. What was that? Sounded like it came from the auditorium. Come on, let's go find out. Somebody's up there. It's like, guys, yeah, somebody's up there, and they've been killing all your all your friends the whole movie. <laughs> Charlie. And also, imagine the Redeemer is up there. <laughs> his whole he, he stomps his foot to make them come into his trap that he's so intricately laying. Couldn't there have been some sort? He has access to the AV system or, or some something more than just a stomping of the foot. <laughs> <laughs> Because otherwise he would have been up on up on stage in costume, just waiting to say his lines. They're like, "Where are they?" <laughs> but then you you go anywhere other than there, you know? Yeah, <laughs> yeah, true. yeah. No, let's go see. Yeah. yeah, the guy who's been killing everybody. Let's go follow the noise he just made. See. So let's it came go. from the auditorium, as they said, and they go there. And guess what, folks? The Redeemer's got a little show prepared for all of them. That's right. Well, it's painful, and I'm going to make you listen to a lot of it right here, <laughs> folks. Get ready. You were probably wondering why I <laughs> asked you here tonight. <laughs> you are my earthly ward. It's time to rest these weary bones. Guilt. <coughs> Guilt. A hard edge thing. You agree, my friend? It rips. Swan like a carrion's beak. Examine your soul. It's to blame for the body's evil ways. It's the oh, my goodness. <laughs> that is a lot. Check out uh, Guilt, a Hard Edge Thing. It's a song by Mose Haven. And, uh,. I didn't realize how how much of the lyrics were completely just that, but um, they are <laughs> yeah, essentially I'm just transcribed. Remembering it. So it's is all that like, to this movie. 
Yeah, 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 yeah. I mean, the lines are, you know, it's what John Cross sings in the uh, the Motown Media Christmas special. It's time to rest these weary bones, just like he said. Anyway, so the actor is. Say what? Finding the right notes and stuff is from Christmas Evil. Yeah, it's all mixed up together. You're right. Um, mm-hmm. So the act, who's the actor guy? Not the Redeemer, but uh, Roger. Roger. Roger is somehow like transfixed by this awful performance, and he's like walking closer and closer to the stage, just like the Redeemer planned. He knew it was going to happen. Roger gets to the exact spot where the Redeemer can drop a weapon from the roof that lands directly on his head and kills him. Um, and keep in mind, the others are just standing in the audience in, in the in, you know in the aisle watching this insane performance by the man who has killed several people in the last several, like hour or so. And they're just watching Charlie. That's riveting. It's, it's a <laughs> performance. It commands your attention. You forget all that other stuff goes out the window. It's the face of good drama. Okay. <laughs> now there are three remaining people. Uh, Kirsten, Cindy, and uh, who? John? Mm-hmm. Yeah, but also concerning the stage, I'm not sure if if I'm getting ahead of it here, but we, we're going to mention the marionette? No, now mention it. Talk about it. Yeah, please. It, it reminds me of the pit where where we kind of don't know if the teddy bear can actually move or not. Mm-hmm. Like, is, is there magic in this world? Or, or what is going on? I, I really don't know if that marionette that hooks up to the strings is, is animated by magic. Yeah. I think it's supposed to be because I don't know if anyone else is helping the Redeemer. But if he does have a helper, then someone's inside that costume um, that's not very well explained. Yeah. yeah. I mean, Makes well, sense. he's got the son of Satan on his side, you know? You know, so. And, and I think at one point he, he, he moves his finger and, like, goes like this and then, like, points and then that makes it animate. Hmm. Mm. When late, late when the battle with uh, Kirst, Kirsten, but anyway, <laughs> it's food for thought in a movie that has a heck of a lot going on. It could have just been the Redeemer himself up on stage giving a speech. Di- ceremonial dagger falls from the sky. Guy's dead. Like, let's include a magic marionette figure. <laughs> it's so out there. It, it you, yeah, crazy. Now, even though at w- during one of the stairs meetings. They said, "Let's not break up again. We let's stick together." But now, mm-hmm. s- once again, John—they've split up. The two ladies are doing yeah. their thing. John is up in a room, just flipping through the the old yearbook. You know, he notices yeah. some photos. He ran after up. the killer. He ran after him. He jumped up on stage and ran after. Okay, him. okay, good to know. That's why. Thank you. I missed that. The ladies are in the bathroom. Oh, Charlie, your favorite thing to see. In movies, they're splashing Grabby water, guys. water on their faces. It makes them feel better. Ceremonial water. Yeah, <laughs> uh, they're very once again very casual for just having seen their friend's head sliced open. You know, my goodness. One of them goes back uh, for her. Br- okay, as they they leave the bathroom, and then one was like, "Oh, my bracelet," and she goes back, which it turns out, folks, was the plan all along for the Redeemer. He knew <laughs> that was going to happen. He locks, when she comes through, he locks her in the bathroom alone, and uh, eventually he drowns her in a uh, a sink that's full of water. So that happens. And uh, now, it's Charlie, terrible. oh, go okay, talk. But it's the tag scene. Let's, yeah. So, like, all the other scenes are these, like, very short, quick, rapid-fire deaths. But planned but out. But planned, clearly planned out. And this one is planned, but... The whole initial part of the scene, he drags her into the showers and then is trying to shove her face into the shower spray. Mm. And it's like, how is he expecting to drown her there? And then finally he goes over to the sink that, oh, suddenly is magically full and then drowns her that way. And it's like he's trying to wash off the makeup that she just put on, blah, 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 like vanity, whatever. But it just, no. Wow. So inept. I was thinking the same thing. I'm like, what is he doing with this shower? It seemed like they did. They had to make it up on the spot. Didn't know what they were gonna do. Yeah. And and why is he a clown now? 
for that matter, too. I mean, <laughs> good question. Some of the, the the sequence of his disguises. He could have been the Grim Reaper the whole time. He could have been, uh, you know, just this theatrical guy the whole time. I, all of a sudden, he's just like, "I'll be a clown." I guess it's in reference to the makeup of her vanity, maybe. Yeah. But when he was the Grim Reaper, that wasn't for any reason that was pertinent to the other girl. Question. I think that's part of the issue, though, right? Is like they're sort of. It's like they decided this loose framework based around the the, the like the seven deadly sins, right? And there's this whole religious undertone, but then they didn't actually put the work in to make these things like resonate in any way. Like after this movie, we, like I I said to Tom was like, you know, if we're the only movie on the seven deadly scenes that anyone ever needs to watch is seven yeah. because that movie is like perfect. With the mm -hmm. with the death scenes, with the way they they exploit all the sins and make connect it to those deaths that are happening, and this movie just fails at on every at, on every level. Yeah. Question. Enough, enough. After after the the face washing, she reapplied makeup. Is that correct? Or no? Oh, I don't know. Oh, I'm gonna say no. Okay. I okay. don't think that happened. Okay. Good. He mentioned something about. But he talks, washed off her makeup. He or, says some, yeah, like the, okay. the killer says something about yeah. washing off her makeup. It would have been awesome if she had actually put reapplied in the midst of this uh, this onslaught. Yeah. You know? yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, so her worry about her her bracelets is almost on that level. Good yeah. point. Yeah, you're right. Okay, so now John is confronted by the Redeemer, who has changed his outfit again. We see the the two thumbs. Um, and let's listen to the Redeemer confront John about his work as a lawyer. Your job is to defend criminals, isn't it? Not to understand why they do the nasty things they're accused of. Understand me, though. The ideals that I stand for, we are quite sane. You've killed four people in cold blood. You call yourself sane? <laughs> I've killed five people. Frankly, I never felt better in my life. Your friend Cindy is down in the little girl's room. Sensible? Sensible? I like that. Yes. I'll not redeem you before I have to. What was I saying? All right. So, he goes on <laughs> to discuss all the reasons he's killing everybody. Um, and I, I, I didn't see, uh, so that, that's where he reveals the whole deadly sins kind of thing. Right, uh, Charlie? I think so. Yes. And, and, and that's his, well, at the beginning, when you, when you see the, um, yearbook getting cut out, there's a little bit of a voiceover kind of talk that's, that's revealing it as well. It kind of okay. coincides with what the priest is saying. That's how I picked up on some like the gluttony, but, um, so the, at this point, the Redeemer is his own face. Is there no mask at all? I think yeah. he's dressed well, like a lawyer. A like there's like a fake mustache. Just a fake mustache. Well, and though no, no, at later at one point he says, "Take off my wig, so you can see who I am." Remember uh, that? No. He does say that. Yes. Oh my yeah. gosh, that it's such a weird, like, barely a costume there. Yes. And kind of think like, what am I looking at? And also, why is he? Why does he have to be a public defender of all the jobs to be like a avarice and a and a rich lawyer? I don't think that's the one for this for a lawyer to have. But uh, yeah, that's a long scene. There's a lot of talking, and it's it's quite poor. <laughs> John, <laughs> John, because it's because it, it's actually the that the the truth of the matter is right. Like public defenders notoriously do not make. A lot of money. Of course, yeah. yeah. It's just another example of every failure at every turn. He's trying to, pre yeah, prevent the state from, um, you know, overusing its power against uh, citizens, and um, that's not so horrible a uh, uh, a calling. Anyway, John lunges for the gun, and a wrestling match begins. Kirsten downstairs hears the ruckus and leaves. Um, Cindy. Okay. Did you notice when she leaves Cindy, Cindy kind of like falls down a little more on the wall in a way that yes. does not seem dead body like? <laughs> yes. 
Yeah. yeah. We we thought that she was gonna come back. When, when that was odd. Watched. that was that's how confusing this movie is and Teresa said look she's still moving and I said well think about the standards of this yeah. movie <laughs> for an actor to play dead I think she by moving she still fell within the realm of acceptable <laughs> <laughs> good enough good enough okay John shoots the redeemer but that's not enough to stop him he still overpowers John and shoots him right in the head now there's only one left she runs to the stage <laughs> Him, right that's what he tricks him there oh yeah. okay oh, his, yeah. his wig off yeah that's when he asks him to take the wig off and then for whatever and reason john goes John for it he goes like, for it and like he kind of shoots him and then he's just but he's they're still forced fighting over the gun it's and, weird. and he so he takes one hand off the gun to continue to wrestle with the one hand and like <laughs> tries to go at the wig and then the guy overpowers him and he and the, the, this shot is kind of cool because, like, John falls to the floor and then, like, he shoots him, boom, through the head. It, it like, all yeah. happens in, like, one, yeah. like, motion. It's really, like, I was like, oh, that's kind of interesting. But, again, gun is the worst, like, the, the lamest way for a horror movie villain to go about killing people. Yeah. And right before that, the... The gun does go off and hits the redeemer in the side, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay, so that yeah. that pays off later. That he he happens. is wounded. But, yeah. But why would he like? It's not like it's not like end of Star Wars. You know, it's like take off my mask so I can look at you. You know, yeah. It's like, take off my wig. He's like, oh, I don't care about you. You know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. See my slightly different hair. It's, <laughs> it's almost the same. Yeah, I know. Oh, so Kirsten goes to sta- the stage. Um, you must make me chase you, the Redeemer says, chuckling. I could die of a heart attack. Um, she gets the gun. <laughs> Excuse me. She gets the gun somehow, but before she can shoot him, she- <laughs> she's stabbed to death <laughs> by the marionette. Tom. <laughs> I, again, it's like, is that thing alive? Or is he controlling you with his mind, Charlie? He might be. I think the Redeemer, it seemed like the Redeemer was passing on some sort of either evil or command at that moment to the marionette to kill. That's just re- just ridiculous. It's the only thing that makes sense. Okay, now the Redeemer's back at church giving a lecture. The kid from the start tells him uh don't worry everything's going to be all right now and we see that oh, there's a dead kid in the back of the truck the bible salesman's truck was that the bully from the choir okay yeah, yeah. the bully's been killed um the redeemer goes back to his room we see he's still healing from the gunshot wound and uh, he's rubbing the wound with his double thumb with his double thumbed hand the kid gets dropped back off in the middle of nowhere and we see he has two thumbs too, and the redeemer, um, the redeemer's no, the been de thumbed. The- yeah. So like he's the the basically what's happening is as he's scratching the wound on his belly, the thumb disappears, and then the little boy is scratching his cheek, and the thumb appears on his hand. Oh my god! <laughs> oh this- my god! <laughs> <laughs> okay. Let's just before we discuss. I'll just run sprint to the ending here. The redeemer holds up his hand. We see he's got one thumb. Like you said, the kids, the kids got a second thumb. Uh, he goes into the. He returns to the lake, and um, I think I saw the kid kind of hold his nose as he was about to go under, which is pro- <laughs> kind of like um, not the cool son of Satan move to do, but it's great. Did, it kind of like dives in. It's like it's like a, instead of like just continuing to walk in, he yeah. like dives in. Has a little lap. fun with it. Yeah. <laughs> it was not what they wanted him to do, where they're like, yeah, good enough. Um, and th- that's the movie. And oh wow, that that's a workout. There's very there's not a not a lot of redeeming values in this movie. Um, nope. sorry, mm-hmm. sorry. Like, well there's pain. There's good pain and there's bad pain. And this one, it's it's heavy on the bad pain. Charlie, your thoughts? 
Yeah, I, I use it as a little bit of a barometer or a low a low mark for confusing. Because we watch a lot of zany movies, but few are this confusing where we can't figure out if there's time travel, what what year it is, you know, anything about the powers, um, the the rules of the world. So sometimes, many times, it's towards the beginning. Just as a normal viewer, you're forgetting what character is, is which character. Um, off the charts, confusing. It really, really feels like a foreign movie that also got like bought by another distributor and chopped up in some way. Um, but I don't know. I mean, trying to look it up on IMDb says it was mostly shot in Virginia, and then one of the reviews said it had Washington D.C. area actors. I don't know how any of those people if there was a script, would have read it and said, I get this, I'm in. <laughs> you know? Yeah. Or, or How? It, the whole thing is so confusing. Just by taking a few things out, just by having a high school reunion massacre with a prologue that made sense, you would have had this, made the same money. You would have satisfied the same need in the market for a, a, a slasher movie. I don't but like adding in all the mystical and crazy. It doesn't do you any good. I I can't I can't think of any time that we've seen a preacher giving a um a sermon in in one of these movies that and that I felt happy. Like it's always and like they're yeah. always over the top conservative. You know, talking about how you know everything is evil and Satan. And any time any of that is in these movies, like all the fun is just torn out of it and uh and so that's a bad start and then when we meet the people it's like maybe we have a chance at a little bit of fun but uh, you know it, it's pretty lame and then once they get to the school again there's just so few moments of of, of levity or, or 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 joy and in the, the redeemer talking in that voice oh it's oh it is a workout to get through this movie and it just looks it looks bad, like you know, just the, it's so fuzzy. I don't. Maybe it's a bad print. If it gets the Blu-ray release that it does not deserve one day, um, <laughs> maybe <laughs> maybe it'll look better. But uh, Ava, <laughs> what do you think of this movie? I mean, it's just not good. Like, there's nothing redeeming about it at all. Like you said, like it just there's not one element that works. There's not one scene that really works. Like it is, it is impressive that they made 80 minutes of this and got nothing from it. Like nothing. <laughs> yeah, it's impressive. I, I just like to me, like that's. I mean, after we finished watching, I was like, all I could think of, like they went wrong in so many different ways. But what I said to Tom at the end was like, literally, like this movie's asking us to side with the redeemer and yet there is nothing that makes you want to side like you're not supposed to slide with side with the slasher in a slasher movie yeah like, I, know. I, I mean and even still like you watch halloween and yeah there's something you kind of root for michael myers but you still kind of root for him to go away like you can you know like you cheer for the the kills because they're funny or interesting and he's there's a little bit of snarkiness there but but at the end of the day you're like I mean, I, you, you gotta pull for Jamie. What's is that? Yeah. Is it Jamie? I forget. Is that Jamie Lee Curtis's? Laurie. Laurie. Yeah, Laurie. Yeah. Laurie. I was like, I know. It. Okay, but you know, like you're rooting. You 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 root. There's gotta be a hero. But in this movie, the hero is supposed to be the bad guy, and it just. And then it's the other thing is like for a movie with this religious idea behind it. The idea is like the devil is coming to, like, for people to, uh, coming to collect people for sinning. But the whole basis of our religion is right that sinners are the ones going to hell. Like, I don't understand. Like, that yeah. that doesn't make sense. Yeah, and the thumbs, like, right. like the thumbs. They're like, why? What? Who? I oh oh to be a fly on the wall. When someone's like, here's the deal. Ready for this? The Redeemer has two thumbs. And after he's done the bidding of the son of Satan, the thumb goes back, the double thumb goes back to the son of Satan. Oh, and also, while the son of Satan 
is in the area. He gets taunted by some kid, and he kills that kid. Eh? Eh? <laughs> <laughs> Tom, let's hear your I review. Mean, Tom, Tom's going to find a silver lining, I know. Let's hear it, Tom. I, I, I have a silver lining. The, the last scene when the Redeemer and the Son of Satan – are, are talking, you know, and he said, the, the, the boy says, things are going to be okay now. And the priest says, I know they are, Christopher. Like, I, I like that moment. And I like the vibe of that kind of world with like this, this weird little town. Like everyone in this church is weird. Like as they're, they're passing by and saying goodbye to the priest, it's a weird town. And like in the hands of like Bill Rabane or something, if that was just the movie, like weird town preacher, like I would have liked it a lot better. Like you have to do one or the other, right? Weird old town New England preacher or something like that would have been cool. Or like true like eighties high school reunion massacre with a clear revenge plot would have been cool. But yeah, like mixing them together just did not work. Yeah, and it's it re- it it feels accident like a lot of the mixing feels almost accidental, like um or after the fact yeah. when they yeah. realized. They only had 49 minutes filmed. They're like, we got to do something. And then so like, well, we could film a lake for three minutes at the beginning. All right, that's a start. Good, good. <laughs> what else you got? Um, so, so yeah, that's the Redeemer. What year? What year was that? The box doesn't say that I have. And and I in in terms of what you were talking about there, Farley. At the end, when the boy is told to go away, and he says, oh, it'll be fine, Christopher. Mm. I just looked it up because it dawned on me. The name Christopher means like that you have Christ in your heart. Mm. Why did they name, unless something is so over my head, why did I, they name the son of Satan the actor's name. The actor's name is Christopher, so I just kind <laughs> of assumed that. <laughs> they didn't think about for a second to just call him something more neutral. That's amazing. Yeah, this, no, oh. Chris, Christopher Flint. That's it was the... Christopher, but geez, I mean, somebody could have. They, nobody with with any kind of knowledge like gave this script a once over and just like cross stuff out or. This movie, be... this movie is kind of like in frailty in that in frailty, the good guys are like I think they they're actually killing people for the angels uh, in frailty, right, Charlie? Yeah, it's been a long time, but I, I do think I do think you're you're onto something. And then, there. like in this one, I I think the move I think the movie, I think the movie is on the side of um the redeemer. Like he was just doing his duty. Now I don't understand. Like, is Satan in the business of of killing people who sin? You know, like I don't know. Like I thought he just encouraged sinning. You know, so yes. <laughs> Just... And why did you guys ever consider why didn't they just have the boy be the one who was came out of the lake and then yeah. set up these traps and got the people? It's unnecessary. It's so why yeah. The, why the middleman? Why the thumb? Why the tra- transfer of the thumb? Oh my god! Oh yeah. And it could just been the, it could have just been the town. Right? He comes to this town. It's just where he happens to end up. And he seeks out the sinners and punishes them. That would have been more like the omen to have the boy doing all the scary stuff. Still. Mm-hmm. Or, yeah. and here's something Maybe else. This reunion's coming around. <laughs> Maybe I can take advantage of that. Like, it doesn't, they would never come about this way. <laughs> while, yeah. we're, while we're on the topic of prologues, I think, um, I don't like, like, even in prom night, I'm not I'm not having fun until we made it to the present tense, you know, or humongous. There's so many so many of these movies where we have the prologue and it's just it just it feels perfunctory. It's like get to the fun. Just have you know, like we can figure it out that they're coming you know, yeah. that they're coming for a Valentine. reunion. I'm not a huge fan of prologues yeah. generally. Yeah. But but like th- this at least maybe if they had made, done something here, it could have tied it all together, but it doesn't. Nothing ties anything together. And you have, I guess, technically, the part where the kid comes out of the water and goes to the church and the part that he goes leaves and comes back to the water, like, that's your, like, those are the bookends of the film. And then the meat of the film is obviously everything that happens at the class reunion. But, like, I just, you know, there, there's, there's, so, there's so much that is just, 
imagery that is used that is just that doesn't make any sense that has no context um i just actually looked online to see if there's any biblical meaning to having two thumbs Ooh. and literally there there's like a sec there's like one section in leviticus but they're talking about like oh they kill a moses kills a ram and you put it on the people's tips of their ears and the thumbs of their hands but but that's about it like there's nothing big you know good like, yeah i was yeah thank you for looking that up because i was curious about that and yeah um yeah it's just if I were to do it, if I were in charge, I would have just started the movie when when you introduce each character, you know? That's where the movie should have started. And then don't even, you know, we can assume, even the characters are like, maybe this is a revenge. Like, that's enough. Like, that's as much explanation yeah. as we would have needed. And um, and also, let them have a little fun before they start getting killed is the, the other problem. Yep. Just like Friday the 13th, the original. You know, you don't start off with everyone miserable. You start off with getting to play some games and going around and having fun for a night or two. I mean, that's what when you're a teenager or like, you know, of the age that rents these movies, especially back in the day, you want to watch that. It's fun to see some young people, you know, having a good time. And you know, the burning has that too. Yeah, yeah. So, um, so many of them. Like, like any one of the ones that we've watched recently where they're going camping you know, we're in the woods and then the, yeah. the crazy slaughter happens. But at least you have like the first night without the, by the campfire. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> yeah. Mm-hmm. All right. Well, uh, and did this um, did this get any awards or anything? I'm 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 assuming. I hope it got nominated for worst movie. It deserves it. <laughs> Tom, we were, or, and probably uh, and, and Ava, you might not be proud of us, but. We nominated this. Oh no! For best screenplay. What? <laughs> I think as a joke. I think as a joke. That's a joke. It's a, an ironic. It has to be because oh my god! If there was a script to this, I would be shocked. Like yeah, best villain was T.J. Finkbinder, as a nominee. That's a as good a name. Best monster was the building. The <laughs> building. <laughs> Uh, yeah, we were uh, reaching. We nominated it for best ensemble cast. Oh, man, we must have been really tired. <laughs> yeah, we were very generous to this, but some of those are are just to get a dig in at the movie. I think. <laughs> yeah. Wow, that's rough. That's real, real rough. I, I'm I'm ashamed. I'm really ashamed. <laughs> a lot of times, a lot of times we watch these movies again for the podcast, and it's like, oh, you know, it wasn't that bad. This is not one of those times. This this is just as bad, if not worse. You know, I didn't even remember the double thumbs, and I, I it's like I didn't like looking at them. Every time you see the two thumbs, it's just like, oh, I don't I don't want to see this, you know, and it, yeah. and it's like, why? This is, it's so weird and and dumb. Ah, and, and it, you know, like it, I mean, obviously, so this was done in 1978, so right, like the special effects are not like ugh, amazing, but like. It seemed like they did it like overlaying film on top of film almost. Like that's how it. That's what it like looks like. It's like a werewolf movie. It, it's so yeah, from 1938. Yeah. 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 It's just like it's such a weird choice, and it's a and it has no real explanation, right? Like I mean, I don't know. Maybe I just am not up on my biblical texts because I'm not that religious. <laughs> Well, we just looked it up. It didn't come up. So. I mean, it didn't come up. In, but, yeah, like, I don't bad. know. Like, I'm not a biblical scholar. I haven't, you know, I, I went to Catholic school when I was in high school, but I don't remember covering this. So Yeah. The double I, thumbs? I, yeah, we never covered the double thumbs. But, like, <laughs> they're just, like, do I choose that? Like, that doesn't, it, it didn't mean anything. Like, that's no, what I keep coming like back to. It's like a necklace or something that he passes to him, you know? It doesn't have to be. It doesn't have to be anything. Well, just so we know. We have to know. I know, but like, no, but I mean, if, but in the film, like if you're watching and it's just, it's, like, I guess it's supposed to indicate a transference, right? But mm-hmm. there's some, there were, there were, there were other ways to do that. Oh, so and, many. Every other possible way to do it is better than the double thumb, you know? Like <laughs> anything yeah. is better than a double thumb. It's like, what so Friday the Thirteenth is like the mask, right? So the kid or or Halloween, you know, Halloween, like they yeah. they pull on the mask or you know whatever. Like there are, we know the Redeemer has excellent mask mask making skills. Oh, like 
could have been the mask. Like, the double sum makes no sense. It's so dumb, yeah. Uh, well, we could go on and on. It makes sense. <laughs> but, um... I guess that I guess we've said everything we need to say about the Redeemer, yeah. Son of Satan, High School Reunion Massacre, Class Reunion Massacre. Is that? Mm-hmm. Yeah. But uh, yeah. it it was it was we suffered, listeners. We suffered through that. Charlie's watched the movie five times, I believe now, and um, <laughs> we do this we do this so you don't have to. But if you do, you at least know what to look for. Uh, and so for Ava and Tom Scalzo and, and Charlie Roxburgh, this is Matt Farley saying good night. <laughs>